Welcome to Playing Card Stock and Finish. Got another deck review for you this week. For the third time in a row, I have a deck for you that's never before been reviewed on the platform. If you've been watching since our first video, you already know I usually have this reaction when presented with a USPCC deck made after 2009. Hey, let me see. The fuck? But there are some exceptions to this rule. And this deck is one of those exceptions. This is the Amazing deck, sometimes known as the Honest Liar deck, because it was made as a stretch goal on a Kickstarter campaign for a feature-length documentary on James the Amazing Randy. I highly recommend watching An Honest Liar if you haven't already seen it. Check out the description below for links. One of the reasons this is an exception deck for me is because James Randy had a profound impact on my life. So there's a degree of hero worship going on here. To find out why and who this deck was made in honor of, we have to take a look at the question, who was James Randy? James Randy was born Randall James Hamilton Zwinge in 1928 and was a Canadian-American stage magician author, and scientific skeptic who regularly challenged paranormal and pseudoscientific claims. He was a co-founder of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, known as CSI, and founder of the JREF, the James Randi Educational Foundation. He began his career as a stage magician as the Amazing Randi, but later in life he chose to devote the majority of his time and efforts into making the world a better place by investigating paranormal, occult, and pseudoscientific claims. As a magician, he set more than one world record, including escaping a straitjacket while suspended and inverted over Niagara Falls. He also beat Houdini's record by remaining sealed in a submerged coffin for 108 minutes. As an author, he wrote several books on and about magicians, but his best-known books are his investigations of psychic and paranormal claims, including Flim Flam and The Truth About Yuri Geller. He also regularly contributed to Skeptic and Skeptical Inquirer magazines. In my opinion, his biggest impact began after he retired from magic and began focusing on skepticism. And forgive a bit of hero worship at this point, this is the part of Randy's life that had the most extraordinary effect on me personally in terms of shaping my worldview. Skepticism is often misunderstood. It is not about being a contrarian. It is not about debunking everything. Randy himself strongly disliked that word. Being a skeptic just means you try and refrain and be as free from bias as possible, and you follow the evidence where it leads and you withhold believing in anything until there's evidence sufficient to warrant such belief. In my late teens and early 20s, I discovered that I wanted to believe as many true things and as few false things as possible. And through people like James Randi, I discovered that skepticism, in conjunction with the scientific method and critical thinking, was the most reliable path to truth. I highly recommend watching the documentary that was made along with this deck. It goes into much more detail about Randy's life, and its title, again, is An Honest Liar. As a skeptic, James Randy has made the world a better place in so many ways, it's essentially incalculable. His investigations revealed many charlatans who dishonestly claimed to have psychics or quote-unquote God-given powers for their own financial gain, irrespective of whether their words or actions hurt others. 
Yuri Geller was one of the most well-known examples, but Peter Popoff was probably my favorite example. To his followers, Popoff seemed to have divine powers. He knew their names. Stand up, Alice. As well as the afflictions they'd come to cure. God is touching that thyroid condition right now. He also knew the personal details of their lives. Hear good news from Charles. Here it comes, complete healing it, Jesus. Woo! I suspected that Popoff's revelations were other than divine. The radio scanner we brought to the hall picked up a decidedly worldly source. Hello, Petey. Can you hear me? If you can't, you're in trouble. Popoff was being prompted by his wife through a wireless earpiece. John? Dearie Johnson. She'd gotten her information from prayer cards filled out by the faithful before the show began. <laughs> is how the skeptics do. He also exposed so-called psychic surgeries and other pseudoscience, like dowsing and homeopathy. He would often take an entire week's worth of homeopathic sleeping pills before giving a 90-minute seminar and be completely alert by the end of it. In 1996, he founded the James Randi Educational Foundation, or JREF, which promotes teaching critical thinking skills and skepticism. Beginning in 2003, the JREF began hosting the Amazing Meeting, known as TAM, annually until he retired in 2015. The Amazing Meeting quickly became the largest gathering of skeptics in the world. The JREF sponsored the $1 million Paranormal Challenge, which offered a prize of a million U.S. dollars to eligible applicants who could demonstrate evidence of any paranormal, supernatural, or occult power under test conditions. Despite being up for grabs for over a decade, no one even came close to winning the prize. Again, I highly recommend watching the feature-length documentary An Honest Liar, which was funded by a Kickstarter campaign in 2013 and came out in 2014. The Amazing Deck was included as a stretch bonus for the documentary, which is why it never got a lot of exposure as a deck in and of itself. But we're about to help that right now by introducing you to this deck. Starting with the Tuck. I have seen few tucks as jam-packed with as much detail as this one. Just to write the script for this portion of this video required almost half an hour of decoding with a jeweler's loop and my rusty amateur radio license knowledge because I had to transcribe Morse code too small for the human eye. But we'll get to that. Let's just start with the simple parts of the tuck first. On one side, we have 100% custom designed limited edition deck. On the other, professional casino quality poker playing cards. On the top, partially under the seal, it reads, An Honest Liar, The Amazing Randy Story, a documentary film directed by Justin Weinstein and Taylor Meeson. And then it has the two... URLs you can pause if you want to write them down. On the tuck flap there is a quote from James Randi that says, I am a cheat, a liar, and a master of deceit. This is my business. This highlights the difference that Randi liked to distinguish between those who deceived you for entertainment purposes who were honest about such deceit and actual frauds and charlatans who would deceive you without telling you they were deceiving you. On the bottom of the tuck, it says these cards are to be used for all types of gameplay and for honest deception. Deck designed and illustrated by Philip Cheney, manufactured by the USPCC, Erliner, Kentucky, 25 barf barf barf. Under the barcode, there is a seven of spades reveal and the letters AHL-AMDCK-0, which is just an abbreviation for an honest liar, amazing deck. Okay, now for the complicated parts. 
On the front of the tuck, we have the amazing deck featuring a mirror image of Randy himself wielding a magnifying glass and his skull-tipped walking stick. He has a feather in his cap with a banner below that reads, Since 1929, the year of his birth. We have blue pips floating about his shoulders. There is a bit of filigree in the bottom corners and lightning bolts in the top corners. A bit more filigree surrounding the lightning. That's the front of the tuck, and here's where shit gets real. Real complicated. I'm going to work from the inside out here. In the center, we have a couple of mirrored winged pigs representing the colloquialism when pigs fly, which is a common expression of extreme doubt, which is a great way to represent skepticism. The text reads, An Honest Liar, The Amazing Randy Story. In the center is a set of handcuffs, which Randy routinely escaped as a magician in the Houdini tradition. In the center of the cuffs, there is the symbol of the atom, which is a symbol of science in general. Surrounding the cuffs on the outside is a pattern enclosing the double helix, which is how DNA organizes itself, another symbol of science. Filling out the middle is more filigree with more lightning bolts in the corners, and in the middle center, four cards with a single pip of spades, hearts, clubs, and diamonds. The only part I wasn't sure as to what it was supposed to represent was the inner border here. I think these are tiny little turbans, which are often worn by mentalists or psychics who do tarot readings or purport to read minds, but I'm not 100% sure on that. That might not be what they're supposed to be. If you think you know what they're supposed to be, let me know in the comments. Lastly is the outer border, which is what took up most of my time analyzing this tuck. I never thought I'd be able to use my amateur radio license on a deck of cards, but in this case, I actually did. The outer border is filled with... Anyone? Morse code. I had to sit down with my jeweler's loop to decode this, and it took forever. It took so long, in fact, I'm not going to tell you what it says in this video. I think I'll do some kind of a giveaway for the first person who submits the correct answer. Uh, I'll figure that out by the time the video posts. Look in the description or for a pinned comment regarding that. Okay, that's the tuck. Let's take a look at these cards. While not heavily modified, the spot cards are not standard. They are somewhat stylized, as you can see here. The Power Ace, the Ace of Spades, is heavily stylized to match the theme of the tuck and incorporates elements from it, like the four cards with pips, the fonts and lettering, which says An Honest Liar, the Amazing Deck, with a URL underneath the spade pip. The Add cards have one traditional double backer card, the second ad card identifies the customized quartz with a message from Randy on the opposite side. Feel free to pause and read that if you'd like. The Joker is Randy himself. They are identical except one is colored and the other is not. The court cards are the pièce de résistance of the deck. All of them completely custom and redrawn as Randy's heroes and supporters, and the art is by Philip Cheney. We'll go over the courts, but I'm not going to spend any extra time on names that everybody should already know who they are. The Jack of Clubs are Penn and Teller. The Queen of Clubs is Margaret Hamilton, who... If I'm correct, it's not the woman who played the Wicked Witch in The Wizard of Oz, but I believe she is the woman who developed Apollo's guidance system. 
The king of clubs is Martin Gardner. He was a mathematician and science writer with interests in scientific skepticism, close-up magic, philosophy, and religion. He was named one of the 100 most influential magicians of the 20th century by Magic Magazine. The Jack of Diamonds is Johnny Thompson. He was a comedian and an illusionist. The Queen of Diamonds is Mary Curie. The King of Diamonds is Isaac Asimov, one of the greatest science writers of all time. The Jack of Hearts is Harry Blackstone Sr., an incredibly well-known magician. The Queen of Hearts is Angela Easton. That was Randy's sister. The King of Hearts is one of my heroes as well, Carl Sagan. The Jack of Spades is Davy Benya, who is Randy's partner. The Queen of Spades is Dr. Harriet Hall. She was an author, a science communicator, and a fellow skeptic. She wrote in uh, the same magazines that uh, Randy did, Skeptic and Skeptical Inquirer, on uh, issues of medical quackery and pseudoscience. She was known as the Skeptoc. And the King of Spades is none other than Harry Houdini himself. Now, on to the stock and finish. Now, in contrast to the previous decks I've reviewed so far on the channel, since this is a USPCC deck, the cardstock is the only thing I dislike about this deck. I have a lot of reasons why USPCC doesn't make cards of the quality level that Cardamundi and the Taiwan Playing Card Company do, but that's also another video in itself. On top of these reasons, I just don't like the feel of USPCC cardstock. Unless it was printed before 2009 at the old factory in Ohio. Every cardstock by Cardamundi feels exponentially better, and at least half a dozen cardstocks from the Taiwan Playing Card Company feel better to me than USPCC cardstock. I dislike it less if it's crushed stock, which luckily this deck is. It's also traditionally cut. It is uh, crushed premium, also known as casino or B stock. It measures 0.288 millimeters per card. Uncrushed B stock is usually 0.297 millimeters and Uncrushed retail USPCC stock is usually 0.293 millimeters, give or take a couple thousands of a millimeter. When USPCC puts the rollers on roadkill mode, they can get their retail stock down to 0.271, 0.273-ish, plus or minus. Uh, USPCC does make the best finish in the world, and this is why the myth persists that USPCC makes the best cards. Most deck collectors by percentage are magicians, and magicians put far too much weight on the finish because they deal with flourishes and fans all day. Deck collectors like myself do not. And so I don't put nearly as much weight on finish as I do on cardstock and other categories that USPCC fails at miserably, like registration, uh, printing alignment, and how advanced the printing technology is overall. Do they offer 18 colors per side? Or are they much more limited than that? Can they do cold foiling on both sides of a card or at all? USPCC couldn't at all until they merged with Cartamundi recently. I won't go on and on about the shortcomings of USPCC because you guessed it, that'll be its own video. So in short, the finish, I would give a 10 out of 10. 
but I'd rate the card stock at about a 3 or a 4 out of 10. But that's a subjective rating. It's just my personal preference. I hate USPCC card stock. And if you're one of the folks who hasn't seen the light yet and still think that USPCC decks feel great, then you'll love the feel of this deck. I just don't. But I love everything else about it. James Randi is a fucking hero. And go watch An Honest Liar. That'll do it for the deck review. Our next video will not be a deck review. And it may take a little more than the usual 7 to 10 days to get out because it's going to be a more extensive video covering stocks and finishes in general. Something that we definitely need to have in order to understand the concept of this channel. That'll be out in maybe two weeks. And again, thanks for being here, and we'll see you next time on Playing Card Stock and Finish.